So Lenny's here. We're going to go ahead and start grabbing all our tools and getting everything ready to go. Don't work on this cracker piece, Chuck. So this 1947 bus that we travel around in is our mobile tool workstation. Um, it's our service vehicle, basically. And we have all the tools we need to work on two strokes. So we'll start with the table and the craftsman tool set. That'll be a good start. Oh, the tires already got it folded up. Okay, so here we are under the, the valve cover here, and we can see that we've got definitely that injector is stuck down because there's clearance between the the rocker and that, but some of the other ones may be stuck too if we can't move them individually. That one does not feel like it's stuck. Yeah, maybe it is. I have to take them off the rack to get them, figure out exactly which ones, but we know that that one is for sure, so once we get that off, we'll go from there. Okay, so this one here is mostly stuck, but it is moving very slightly but it hasn't been compressed yet. These these two are completely stuck over here. So Ty, I pulled the rack out. Ty's gonna remove the crossovers and pull them over here, by the way. Okay, so on this side, I got the valve cover off over here. I went ahead and pulled the rack and all three of these injectors are stuck. You can see these two have the spaces in between them. Uh, this one just probably happens to be in the position where it's touching, but uh, they're all seized up. None of them are moving. So we're gonna have to pull all three injectors on this side as well, so. Shouldn't be too long. Okay, I'll show you how to free up a stuck 71 series injector. These are N65s. Um, when it's stuck, this doesn't move at all. This is usually stuck down, or if it's, if it's been depressed, it doesn't come up, it's not moving. First thing I do is start lubing everything. There's a little hole right there. I take some PB blaster, spray it down in that hole. Make sure this gets some lube on it, get some lube up in here around there, and then I lube the fuel system too, so I'm spraying PB right down into the... And then you grab a big hammer. <laughs> a dead blow, something soft, you don't wanna hit them too hard. You can start tapping these, there it goes. It started moving just a little bit. Just working it through its cycle a few times. Don't hit too hard, you don't wanna bend that tab over on the end, so when you do hit, you hit on the corner over there where it's stronger. This side you can hit a little harder. Don't use like a sledgehammer. Could you use a brass hammer or would you only use a soft face? I just use this. I, you could probably use whatever you want. I, actually, I have used, I've used a claw hammer in the past too, so. I've had this free up 95% of my injectors. This will free it up. Once I get this part working freely, it's still not enough to pull it with my fingers. Just barely. It hurts, so I'm going to just keep lubing it up. If I pull this out, you can see those, there's gears on here. You can see these little teeth. And all that's getting lubed up inside there. And what those do is there's a, there's a pin that goes down the middle that's also got teeth on it. And as these gear these pins go in, it spins that other one. And when it spins it, it's spinning it, we're going to say up and down, uh, for how much fuel is going to be able to come out each time that you do it. And then I'm going to do the plunger a few times. You know, I took a couple injectors apart. I really should have recorded it when I did them. Yeah. So it's getting free now. Now you can see it, it's moving all on its own when I turn it upside down, that's how it's supposed to be. And then the, the real test here, fill it up with fuel, AKA PB blaster. Make sure this thing is pushed all the way in. That's full fuel right there. Don't have it up against your skin because it's going to inject from the bottom. And I'm gonna take the hammer, I'm gonna whack this and you should see it spray out in a star pattern on the bottom. Just turn it off full fuel. Ready? Yep. Did you see it? Yep. <laughs> okay, putting the injectors back in. All three of these on this side are completely freed up and working. Just getting ready to put everything back together on here.
Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so I've kind of been looking for some. Not quite, but almost. If I twist this while I'm doing it, just get a little different angle on it, it wears in a little different spot. tight on there. Yeah, split rim, great thing to sit on. <laughs> Old tire. At least the way you're sitting now, if it lets go, it's shooting the ring away from you. <laughs> it's pretty brave, isn't it? <laughs> I think ignorance. I was gonna say is... brave might not be the right word. <laughs> he didn't pay attention. There was a split rim. He just hopped right on there. Like, oh yeah, look at this. Got a seat. <laughs> Oh no, I pulled my socket off. I was hoping that was going to get it, not hit the line. Hey, at least it's not raining. <laughs> Why'd you have to say that? I was just going to say <laughs> that. Why? <wrong? laughs> Do you see the sky? There's no sun. <laughs> I had to make a comment about it. It's just not raining. <laughs>
So am I putting these injectors in the holes over here? You can put them in. I'll hop over there and set them up in a minute if you want to do this side. Just before we put the rack in, there are oil drain holes right by where these small bolts go through. Just take a little bit of a rag. Just kind of shove it down in the hole a little bit. So when we go to put this together, we don't risk dropping that bolt down into the oil pan. Because that sucks. Don't hurt them. Just gotta go find a new bolt. Which sucks. <laughs> Statement stands. Probably found a few of them in the pan. So I plan on got this shit in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for you to come flip the rack over here while I tighten it down. That's really stiff. Feel that. Spray these and keep working them. Yeah, the spring. Is that spring tight on there? That spring's not tight on there, is it? I guess it is. There it goes. Okay. Tighten them? Yeah. Can you see that? How it's moving back and forth. That's not knock out. I thought we were going to have to pull injectors again. <laughs> my Craftsman filter in. Alright. Is this me or is that black? That's black. <laughs> I can turn it. Um, you want to hand me that? <laughs> You ever pierced a fuel filter and then thought for a second, did I just do that to an oil filter? <laughs> Nope, I'd have to say that'd be the first time I've ever had that thought, but I also for a second did wonder, did you pierce an oil filter? <laughs> That's funny. What uh, what color was the fuel that came out of the tank? Uh, was it black? Kind of looked blackish. This was black. I'm thinking they were right, they're dumping their used oil. No, that's exactly what I was about to say. That's what the, back in the day, that's what they did. Yeah. Dump that straight weight in there. So I'm gonna move the rack while he's burning it over just to make sure nothing are sticking. I get a kick out of this. Notice anything missing? Front brakes were an option. <laughs> neither, neither of the fronts have brakes, so that's crazy. But uh, the truck is coming along. I think we're about an hour away from starting her up. The cab was pretty clean too inside. Clean, yes, but it smells terrible. <laughs> it smells terrible.
get me a pair of pliers. Is there a pair of pliers on there? Oh, if I don't remember, it's not an angle. I wouldn't put so much diesel in it. Turn the engine over while Tyler does that. Now, hold on a second. What we're going to watch for is on the return line, this one right here. Yeah. When fuel starts to come out of that, we know that the fuel system is properly. You might want to seal that up with the finger tire. Take your rubber glove. The return line? No, no. The, around the oh. filler because you're going to pressurize it a little bit. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Taking it? Barely. Alright, let's go on a second. We hold the rack in the off position just in case I push a button in here. You got it back? Yep, they're all the way out. This thing is latched in place so I can like use it for leverage, right? Oh, no. no. Automatic shutter. Be cool to restore that. <coughs> I can't see it, so. and everything. Right here. We gotta hook the batteries up. So. Oh no. I'm off on top of the motor though. Get the rack off ready. If for some reason the starter sticks on or something like that, we need to pop those just the grounds off will be fine, okay? Alright. Got the rack to the off position. Yep. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Anticlimactic. Okay. Uh, Solenoid problem. Tap with hammer. Kicked over one time, didn't it? Yeah, and I let off of it like I because it scared me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not very comfortable here. I got to. I'm going up. To get up there. I'm going up in.
Where's that old, let me see that old solenoid down there. So we took the solenoid apart and you can see how it's broken on the sides and it's all just corroded up in there and worn real bad. And the bolts on the top broke off. They're down in there, there's no way to really get them out. So we just went with a modern solenoid over here. Temporarily mounted right now, just to see that things go. Um, probably zip tie that down just in case the vibration makes it, I don't wanna arc something out. Got it there? Yep. Let's see if this works. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That was anticlimactic again. Well, let me fix that. Hmm. That's solid. Okay, hold it to off, please. That's apparently supposed to be. Side, no, not getting anything on that signal wire. Is that the signal or is that the ground side? This is the signal. This is the ground. This All goes right, right to the your signal to power probe then. Ready? Yep. Go. Getting off? Yep. Go. Okay. Ready to try it with some fuel? Uh, I'm going to spray a little ether in there. Okay. going to give it a little bit and then stop it. Yeah. Okay. Go. Ready? Yep. It's turning really slow. Okay. Go. I'm feeling a weird spot in the uh, rack as you're doing that. Yeah, we need a Need some more battery juice power, I think. What is that? Got another battery. Yeah, they're down to 12.3. You have a battery charger we can throw on them? Uh, yeah, it's not a not a roll around style, but it's got an instant start feature. Okay. Yeah, well, let's try that. Yeah, let's All right. Hit him with a little bit of power. So I'm only getting 6.5 volts when I'm cranking. Cranking. That's not a lot. All right, go ahead and tell us a little bit about it. All right, this is a, a 64 cracker box uh, I purchased about uh, two years ago. A farmer had it out in Nebraska. It was on a, a big family grain farm. And uh, the owner had had a stroke. He kept on thinking that someday he was gonna get back to the love of his life, which was farming. So the truck was parked. He never recovered. So the park, the, the truck set parked for over uh, 20 years and, and I came along It actually, I got a bargain price on it. It cost me more to get the truck here than it did to buy it. Um, but in this area, anytime a cracker box comes up for sale, it's gone pretty quick. Um, so it was worth getting it. So. Um, as Scott mentioned, I'd done several things to it. I power washed the engine, uh, took a scraper, got all the grease and filth so I could uh, keep it out of the inside of the engine, took the air cleaners off, got rid of the old fuel. Um, if we get it running, then the next steps is to replace the uh, clutch slave cylinder and the clutch master cylinder, get those primed and up to speed. Um, then move on to the brake lines or the old rubber and it, the truck's so old that it doesn't have the spring-loaded uh, emergency brake feature so I'll also change out those uh, uh, pots I guess they call them and uh, and replumb the lines and then obviously some uh, newer tires and uh, she'll be on the road and you've got some other trucks too right yes yeah, so I've got a got a 69 uh, freight liner it's got a inline 671 and it's running <laughs> uh, running it and drivable but i always i got it and then i found the cracker box which the cracker box is what i always wanted so uh 
I was born in 64, so kind of need to have uh, have this old beast knowing it's just as old as I am. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for coming out. Thank you. Gotta just go buy a couple of batteries. I would. Okay, we ready? Yep. I'm not having that starting foot. Just get rained on. Dirt, yes. dust, <laughs> blew those caps off. That's what I was hoping for. I didn't want all that shit the valve cover. Okay, I, mean, I was hoping to blow the caps off. I didn't expect a shower of dirt. That was awesome. <laughs> Might have been some bird's nests in there. Or something. Yeah, there was <laughs> something in there. That was awesome. Hang, hang on, I might have that back. I'm gonna lay that on top of here. All right. Cover your side. Yeah. <laughs> Did you shut it down? Uh, I was being very conservative with the fuel. Okay. Here. It made noise about was happy, but <laughs> I didn't want to let it just take off. If you don't see any oil coming out of the rockers in about 10 seconds, go ahead and shut it down, all right? Okay. Here we go. Give a little juice. current to go through there and I'll try to I could clip it with vice grip or something hold it tight so I can hold it tight and I put vice grip on it so I'm pushing tension on it if I try to hold it with my hand it's going to spark and you know if you put one of those lugs on there there'll be more surface area yeah for it to touch Thank you. 
let's start. All right, here we go. Linkages here. We do have throttle movement from the throttle pedal, but the engine shutdown, which is this one here, this is this like choke type cable, and it's completely seized. We can't get it to move at all. Uh, so right now we have no way to. Sh if we put the valve cover back on, we got no way to shut the engine off. So we're gonna get that freed up so he can start it and run it without that. Um, once we do that, we can, if we build up air, we can probably drive it around the lot a little bit. But we'll see what happens here. Um, everything looks good. It's got good oil flow. I don't have an oil pressure gauge back here. There's probably one on the dashboard, but I can't see it. But I can tell by the way that it's shooting up through here that it was doing pretty well. Um, we got a slight little coolant leak on a hose or a line that looks like it's coming off of the air compressor there. Um, but it's just, it's just a tiny little drip. So I'm not concerned about that either. Um, but we'll get this where he can start it and shut it off. And then I think everything else for him is just going to be stuff that he should be able to do. We went through and got the motor running. That was the that was the hard part. It's going to need a new starter solenoid. <laughs> that that one we just got to replace that one. And clearly, it's not made for the. It's out, off of a. I'll, Tyler's not here anymore, but it's off of a like a Ford Power Stroke. So I mean, similar leaders, but apparently the starters just are, aren't the same amount of power amperage that they're pulling. Okay. Starting to work. Starting to. Oh, that's a hundred times easier than it was a minute ago. And pull it to pull it to off. Off is back, right? Yep, that's off. So it's it's moving the rack now. So I just keep lubing it a little bit and get it going, and we're good to go. So again, we're going to let the engine's going to idle on itself if it doesn't run away. And then you're going to reach over and pull it to off once it starts. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead. That's correct. It worked. Sweet. You can start it back up and let it idle. the other valve cover back on and then we can set the cab back on it okay so we're swinging the cab down and locking it into place hop up in your truck i'll start it for you all right 
right? <laughs> Sweet. You gonna take over, Kelly. Okay, you got all your controls there and everything? Yeah, let me hit this throttle pedal once without a start. It goes to the floor. And doesn't come back because that spring's not on there? Maybe we should hook that back up. Wanna do that? Hook that is spring. that spring broken or is it just disconnected? Well, it was broken. Just a little bit if though. If you pull it back up with your foot, it moves the linkage back? Yeah, it seems to. Okay, worst case scenario, you know how to shut it down there, right? <laughs> you, got, you got access to that shutdown now? Yeah, so the shutdown we just use to work even if it starts Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. Because I can't get to the emergency stop from back here anymore now. Okay. Can we start it? Yeah. If it starts to run away, you got to flip the cap back up, okay? Okay. button up there. Up to 40. No. No, not enough air. <laughs> I think it's probably seized up. It, it would have made a noise something yeah. probably. Stick on a little bit, or did you yeah, just it stuck. the throttle pedal stuck? Throttle, well, no, it was it came back up, but it just started taking off. <laughs> it scared you. <laughs> it blew out a bunch of crap over there. Wow. Well, you think it'll it'll idle now if we start it back up? I think so. Let's, let's just give it a try. Then. Did you push the shut off back down? Uh, yeah. Yep, shut off's back down. The throttle's all the way up. Okay. Smells like fuel, that might not help me. Feel the fuel difference being cool and fuel bad. If not, do the taste test. Uh, That's water. Cool. Okay. If it's for some reason still revved up real high, yeah. you're gonna pull that shut down back, okay? Alright.
throttle. It's the, the throttle pedal was not reacting to it well, backwards? Well, it was, yeah, whenever I'd pull it back up, it would keep on, you know, at a higher, yeah. higher rate. I, I mean, but even though you pulled it back up, it was still Yeah, there. when I pulled it back up, it would yeah. still keep on. Yeah. You All think right. that's just a linkage I problem? I think it's just a linkage problem. Yeah, because we, we, we were giving it off the governor rack and it wasn't doing anything like that. So it's whatever's happening. It, it may very well have to do with that. There's not a return spring on there and it's not pulling the throttle back down. So it's staying higher. Um, I guess the... But that spring would actually go the other way in there. I guess we could tilt the kit cab back up, start it, and then see if, you know, manually rev it up and see if it yeah stops the problem well i know i know it will because okay. that's how i was manually doing it so oh, okay. the, the problem is between the throttle pedal and that so you're inputting the, the you're inputting the throttle with that shaft and it's not allowing it to return back and i'd say the problem is that spring yep right okay we are uh back in franklin tennessee so we finished that job and came back down here to finish up on lance's bus and bill's bus um, so we got that cracker box going. There's a couple little issues with it. Uh, number one, the previous owner had a auxiliary priming pump that was hooked up on there. And we soon learned why that was there. Uh, as we were having fuel starvation issues, we'd shut it off. And if you waited more than like five minutes or so, the fuel was just running out. of It was depriming the whole entire engine. Um, so they had that little pump on there to be able to keep it primed. Uh, so there's some type of a leak in there in one of the fuel lines or something like that. Um, it's really hard to get to the fuel pump on there as well. So uh, as long as he keeps a manual pump on it to keep prime, it, he won't have an issue, but he's gonna replace the all the fuel lines. They're, you know, they're 30, 40 years old probably. So uh, he's gonna do that and uh, get that, that problem taken care of. So whenever you hear it kind of hard knocking, that's when it's getting some air in the system. Um, it just took us a little while. You know, we, we ended up hooking the garden sprayer back on it a couple times to, to reprime the system to get it to go. But uh, it runs good. It sounds good. The throttle linkage was a problem with the pedals up there. There's no return spring on it. Uh, so the pedal just falls to the floor. You try to lift it back up. Um, and there's like a delay because it's not pulling the rack back with it. It's like a spring loaded arm in there. Um, and it's not, it's not returning it fast enough. But the throttle linkage itself, if you do it on the governor, it's perfectly fine. So uh, I'm very confident that that is just a problem with the, um, uh, the pedal, the pedal linkage. So, uh, we can't move it or drive, drive it. <clears throat> the, um, the clutch is uh the clutch cylinder that's on it is no good it doesn't move anything when you do it uh he found a rebuilt one or a new old stock one on ebay that he's buying uh so he'll get to that uh, it's got those old split rim wheels on it and um, it's gonna be a while before it gets driving but uh it, he'll get it going and, and now that the engine's running uh he knows what direction to go with it and uh it, it sounds good um I'm real happy with it. So it was, that was a fun day. It was a fun project and I'm happy to, can't wait to see it back on the road, but it's going to be a little while, but uh, it's a nice truck. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. We do things like this, uh, I don't know, five, six times a year, probably at least. And then uh, we're always constantly working on the vintage stuff. Thank you.